Newdigate, around 400 kilometres southeast of Perth. In this part of Western Australia's grain belt, water repellent soils are a common challenge for growers. Local farmer Steve Thompson is hosting a small scale trial investigating the effectiveness of wetting agents or surfactants on sandy non wetting soils. The trial looking at different surfactants or wetters, soil wetters, um, interests me. We're doing that ourselves um, and I just wanted to see results from different products and different methods of doing it to see if we could improve our system. On Steve's farm, about 25% of his lighter soils are non-wetting and in a low rainfall zone, soil moisture is a valuable commodity. While surfactants can benefit non-wetting forest gravels, their effectiveness on sandy soils needs more scientific evaluation. So you can see clearly that plant densities in these plots are, are quite acceptable. Any grower would be pretty pleased with, with that. Yeah. Trial Co is facilitating the trial with GRDC Investment. It's a two-year study and there are five trial sites in all. At these sites, crops have been sown on different stubbles and a number of surfactants applied. However, an unusually wet April and May has masked the effectiveness of the surfactant trial. We've tried to select uh, the trial set in both years to capture um, different crop types on, on different um, stubble types. So we've, we've got canola on a cereal stubble, we've got cereal on a canola stubble, and we've got cereal on lupin stubble, we've also got cereal on a cereal stubble. So we were, we were hoping that we could try and tease out any relevance of the, the impact of stubble on, on the effectiveness of the surfactants, but due to the lack of responses it's been hard to make those, those um, comparisons. It's obviously very wet here. They haven't had to work too hard this year. Just add water to get good germination and crop establishment. But it's under normal seasonal conditions when soils are hard to wet, that surfactants are meant to make a difference. And it's also why canola was the primary focus. Of the five trials that we've done this year, um, three of them are canola. And the reason for that is that canola is is the crop that's generally seeded earlier in the seeding program so quite often it's seeded under marginal conditions or even dry um, whereas w when you start moving into the cereal seeding there's been more chance for rainfall events to occur. Another consideration in making the trial as relevant as possible was to use commercial surfactants. Those with the highest adoption amongst growers in this part of WA's grain belt were selected. Common practice was also applied to surfactant placement, so it was banded with the seed. But it wasn't the only application method. There is a product that, that we've um, trialled that we've both applied on top of the furrow, so um, behind the press wheel, as opposed to having it in the soil layer at seeding. And the same product we've also applied with nozzles as a, um, a boom spray ap application. By comparison, Steve Thompson, who's been using wetters for more than a decade, has customised his approach to application. Ours, we have to place it as close to the seed as possible, so we're running two liquid systems on our seeder, one to put fertiliser or liquid fertiliser below the seed and one to put the wetting agent as close to the seed as we can. Um, I think that is working better than what we used to do, um, but it's still not 100%. So what we're looking at here is the plant numbers per square metre. Plant counts and bioproduction assessment are some of the other data sets the trial was designed to analyse. That profile is, is wet all the way, as far as I've dug anyway. If there was a scenario where post-seeding we, we had a four mil rainfall event, I think that's when you're more likely to tease out a, a response. Um, and this year, it's been wet from the start. As frustrating as it is, there will be outcomes when the trial winds up after this harvest, though possibly not the outcomes anticipated at the start of the trial. Despite the setbacks and challenges, there's at least one known, according to Trial Co's Kylie Lockyer. Basically when there's rainfall, that surfactants aren't um, giving a return to the grower. Without science to sway him otherwise, grower Steve Thompson will maintain his long-established program of surfactant use. We are still going to keep using it because I can see a response in certain areas. 
However, he concedes that while yield response would increase if the non-wetting soil issue could be overcome, it would offer a limited benefit to him. If we could improve our crop establishment through the getting over the non-wetting issue, it, it's probably only going to have a 5 to 10 per cent impact on yields because it's not our whole program. Um, it's only a, it's areas of the farm. It's a home truth that reflects the complexity of the non-wetting soils issue and underlines the need to adapt the use of wetting agents to your own situation. I think growers need to look at the fact that this is only a, a part of um, and techniques to overcome non-wetting soils and also they need to know their soil type and, and know what best will suit their, their farming system. Try and talk to growers that have, have done it and had success, I think. We've been doing it for a long time, we're getting to the stage where we think we've almost got our system worked out as good as we can do here.